learners in this third video on indian paintings we will focus on regional variations of painting in this video the discussion will be related to different forms of indian painting how they are distinct from one another what is the popular form that still exists and the regional assets need to be conserved so that we can promote tourism in a big way so now let us start our discussion on the regional variations of indian paintings learners we have studied that painting has found a place as an integral part of indian culture painting in the artistic and religious form is considered to be central to the growth of our culture they are the best depictions of visual art in india miniature paintings of india as the name suggests are small intricately designed paintings paintings on cloth or paper is one of the common practices these paintings are mythological in character incidents of religious texts are depicted though it differs from if artist to artist the foundation of miniature painting in india can be traced back to 9th century but they reached their glory at the time of mughal rule in india now let us first understand the history of miniature painting in india we have discussed in the earlier videos that the buddhist pala period that existed in india around 9 to 10th century was the time when the miniature painting came into being earlier we had paintings on leaves but with the advent of paper in 12th century artists began creating their paintings on paper they reached their peak uh, when the mughal dynasty flourished in india now in this video we will discuss some of the prominent schools of painting in india let me discuss with you the first school that is the pala school this is the oldest school of miniature painting in which buddhist religious texts were represented around the 8th and 11th century the artist of the school used palm leaves and strips of cloth and arranged them in the format of a book this form of painting also gained popularity in shirinaga nepal tibet and other neighboring places the art from pala school can be recognized because of the symbolic use of colors and skillful line drawing the colors used for these paintings were derived from natural sources and the theme revolved around the life of lord buddha and the other deities the second important school that emerged during this point of time was the jain school this laid great emphasis on new styles around 11th century the distinguishing feature of these miniature paintings were heavy golden outlines figures with large eyes square shaped hands and pointy noses Religious texts like Kalpa Sutra are depicted in these paintings. This was the first school of miniature painting to switch from palm leaves to paper. The central theme of these paintings revolved around Tirthankaras. The figures were shown dotted with heavy jewelry. The mental attitude towards painting took birth in this school of painting several people were shown trying to achieve the same thing by considering different ways and for the first time gold and silver were also used in these paintings so this painting art focused mainly on the psychological aspect or the attitude of people of that time then we have a very popular school which is the mughal school we are aware that noor jah was very fond of art and miniature paintings and painters received great patronage from her the artwork under mughal rule has strong narratives bold colors were used in the painting and some of them even inspired painters who later came up with depictions of hindu epics like mahabharata and ramayana the two most celebrated artwork that came up during this time were the tuti nama and the hamza nama though we know that aurangzeb ended all forms of art when he took the throne but his successor bahadur shah tried to revive it 
there was a decline of Mughal school of miniature painting under Aurangzeb. However, the paintings enjoyed a great patronage during the rule of emperors like Akbar, Shah Jahan and Jahangir. The paintings of this time saw the influence of Islamic and Persian culture. The work was delicate and detailed and the central themes were court scenes, wildlife, wars etc. Then we move to another school of painting which is known as the Pahari school of painting. It originated in the 17th to 19th century in the Himalayan kingdom of North India. The most popular places of Pahari school of miniature painting were Kangra, Garhwal. As the name suggests, Pahari paintings refer to a form of painting done mostly in a miniature form originating in Himalayan Hind kingdoms such as Noorpur, Chamba, Kangra, Mandi and Garhwal. An offshore of Mughal painting, Pahari painting was patronized mostly by the rulers who uh, had ruled these regions. Each region created unique variations giving it a new form such as the Vishnui painting or the integrate Kangra painting. The Kangra style reached its peak with paintings of Radha and Krishna inspired by Jaydev's Keith Govind. This school was greatly influenced by the Mughal school and was also supported by Rajputs. So we had other schools also that came up such as the Vishnui school, the Chamba school and the Garhwal school and each school had its unique variations to offer. So in this video I have discussed with you few schools of Indian painting. There are number of schools with their own distinctive variations and qualities. Now I will discuss with you some distinguishing type of paintings in India which are regional in nature and are related to specific geographical area. The first such painting is the Madhubani painting. Also known as Mithila painting, it is an art form popular in the state of Mithila in the state of Bihar. The exact origin of the art form is difficult to trace but it is still kept alive by women folk and is said to have originated when King Janaka of Nepal commissioned local artisans to paint murals in his palace for the wedding of his daughter Sita to Lord Rama. Originally these paintings were done on the walls of the Gobarghar or on the chamber of a newlywed person coated with mud and cow dung. These paintings depict symbolic images of lotus plant, the bamboo, fishes, birds and snakes and they represent the social environment. Like most ancient art form, Madhubani art took inspiration from nature, Hindu religious motives and the themes generally revolved around Hindu goddesses like Krishna, Rama, Shiva, Durga, Lakshmi and Saraswati. Natural objects like the sun, the moon and religious plants like Tulsi are very common in this type of paintings. Usually the painters do not leave any empty space and the gaps are filled by painting of flowers, animals and even geometric pattern. This form of painting is characterized by the use of bright colors and they make use of natural sources like plants for the colors. So after discussing Madhupani painting, now let us move to the next part of the regional painting which is known as Panch Chitra. More than 1000 years old, Panch Chitra is one of the oldest and most popular form of Orissa. The name comes from the Sanskrit word patta means canvas and chitra means picture. Known for its rich color, attractive motifs, designs and depiction of mythological figures, Panch Chitra is characterized by the themes which depict the Jagannath temple, the Krishna Leela that is the enactment of Jagannath as Lord Krishna displaying his powers as the child as well as the 10 incarnation of Lord Vishnu and the Panchmukhi 
Ganesha, depiction of Lord Ganesha as a five-headed deity. Preparing the patta is the first step to the Panchatatra art. A task takes around five days and the patta is prepared by making a tambourine paste known as the Nyas Kalpa. This paste is then used to hold two pieces of cloth together and coated with the powder of soft clay stone until it becomes firm. As soon as the cloth dries, it is polished with a rough stone and then with a smooth stone or wood. This canvas is considered ready to paint once it becomes suitable. The next stage involves preparing the paints to be used for the process. So again this is a technique which is traditional in nature and practiced by the people of that particular region. Now let us move to the another type of painting in India which is known as the Mysore painting. Mysore painting is an important South Indian art form that comes from the Vijayanagara school of painting. While the origin of the art form can be traced back to the Ajanta times, it actually flourished and evolved under the patronage of Vijayanagara Empire. The art form spread to places like Mysore, Tanjore, where the painters had migrated after the fall of the empire. These artists found further patronage by the royal court and had settled in Sri Rangapatnam, the successor of Raja Vodyar, patronized the art by commissioning temples and palaces to be painted with mythological scenes. Some of these specimens were destroyed during the war between the British and the Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan. However, the art form continued to flourish under the patronage of Tipu Sultan as well. Characterized by the use of bright colors and Giso work, Mysore paintings are known to inspire feeling of devotion and humility in the viewer. The theme of these paintings primarily revolve around Hindu gods and goddesses and scenes from Hindu mythology. Giso refers to a mixture of white lead powder, glue that is used as an embossing material and covered with gold foil. This work of Mesur painting is very much integrate. After this, let us discuss a classical art painting of southern India that is Tanjore paintings. Developed in the late 16th century in Tanjore in Tamil Nadu, the paintings evoke a sense of class and timelessness with their alluring illustrations of Puranic scenes. This ancient form traces its origin to Tanjavur, capital of the erstwhile Chola Empire and is popular among contemporary Indian women for showcasing their artistic inclination and taste. Tanjore paintings are mostly subjected to Hindu god goddesses and saint episodes from Hindu relics or religious texts. These are visualized and sketched in the paintings. In many instances, Jain, Sikh, Muslim, and secular objects are also depicted in the painting. A typical Tanjore painting would consist of one main figure, usually a deity with a well-rounded face, body and oval shaped eyes. Then we have the main figure which will be enclosed by the painter in such a way that there are scenes of wars as well as devotional scenes that are depicted in the painting. After this, let us move to another form of painting which is known as the Cherial Scroll Paintings. Cherial Scroll Painting is popular and modified version of Nakashi art which is highly rich in local motifs. This art form is unique to the state of Telangana and we find also some of uh, this type of painting being practiced in the Hyderabad region. These scrolls are painted in narrative format similar to a film role and depict stories from Indian mythology and shorter stories related to the Puranas and epics. Scroll paintings are known for their rich history and they also assume a significant role among Asia's artistic traditions. The Cherial paintings represent a local distinctive intervention and focus on the traditional regional local themes. 
they are easily recognized by certain unique character characteristics. These are painted in vivid hues with most primary colors showing a predominance of red color in the background. The paintings are characterized by unbridled imagination of the local artisans. In this form of art, the iconography of major deities like Vishnu, Shiva, etc. also carry a strong space. The subjects are again mostly drawn from mythological characters, ancient literary sources and folk traditions. So, we have themes of Krishna Leela, incidents from Shiva Puran, Markande Puran and folk stories of Garur and other local areas. The main narrative involves scenes from the common rural life such as women performing kitchen work, men working in field or experiencing merry time, festival settings etc. The costumes and the paintings reflect the culture of Telangana. After studying this form of painting, now let us move towards north and study the importance of Rajput painting. Rajput painting originated in the royal state of Rajasthan around the late 16th and early 17th century. We know that Mughals ruled almost all the princely states of Rajasthan at that time and because of this, the Rajput painting India has a strong Mughal influence. Each of the Rajput kingdom evolved a distinct style but they had certain similarities and common features. So we have dominance of the style of painting. The themes revolved again around the great epics of Ramayana and Mahabharata on landscapes and on human cult society. The Rajput paintings of India were done on the walls of palaces, inner chambers of forts, havelis, etc. The colors used for paintings were derived from mineral, plant sources, precious stones, gold and gold and silver. Now let us discuss some of the schools of Rajput painting. Starting from the 16th century, the Rajput painting originated numerous schools emerged. Some of the popular schools are the Bikaner school, we have the Bundi Kota, Kalam school, Jaipur school, Kishangarh school, Marwar and Mewar school, Amir and Jaipur school. The paintings of Amir and Jaipur show strong Mughal influence. They also represent bold composition and use of abstracts reflect the regional characteristic. The paintings of 18th and early 19th century uh, illustrate episodes from the life of Krishna. So we have basically devotional subjects which were painted at that point of time. After studying the Rajput painting, let us move to another form of regional painting which is known as Kalamkari. Kalamkari literally translate into pen craft with kalam meaning pen and kari means art. It is the most beautiful traditional Indian art forms and involves block printing or hand printing typically done on a piece of a cotton fabric. The unique feature of the kamalkari art is that it makes use of only natural colors or vegetable dyes. Kalamkari art and painting is concentrated primarily in Andhra Pradesh and the regions around Machli Patnam. The main centers of Kalamkari art is situated near the banks of rivers because the art needs a constant supply of clean river water. Kalamkari art was a household occupation of several rural women and craftsmen in ancient times and is passed from one generation to another. Andhra Pradesh is still the main hub of Kalamkari printing in India. Craftsmen engaged in Kalamkari painting art modernized the art with various contemporary themes. However, Hindu mythologically inspired Kalamkari themes are in great demand in international market. 
the persian art also influenced the original kalamkari design kalamkari art is known for its beautiful color patterns that flow through a variety of different themes we can spot figure of woman in yellow demons in green and red and god in the shade of blue lotus motifs tend to be the most common background of these paintings in the kalamkari technique the craftsman first decides on the fabric and the color the chosen cloth is then bleached with either cow or goat dung and it is further treated with milk and solutions that help to prevent the color from spreading after kalamkari painting another form of regional painting is the kalighat painting in the 19th and the early 20th century kalighat paintings served as the greatest form of painting and was one of the most important souvenirs bought by the tourist and the domestic pilgrims visiting the kalighat temple in kolkata with bright colors bold strokes realistic figures religious figures as well as secular and civil objects these paintings were popular among the visitors they derived their name from the kalighat temple which flourished as a popular art form with the rise of settlement around the temple the legends indicate that the kalighat temple is associated with goddess sati and the artist of the kalighat paintings are generally from the nearby villages around the temple which is situated in calcutta and this is a primary center for the painting we have long narrative hindu mythological scenes which are composed and narrated through these paintings these paintings are made using natural dyes and are extracted from vegetables and minerals kalighat painting reached its zenith between 1815 and 1890 with representation of varied styles composition and color while images of hindu gods dominated the artistic impressions islamic themes featuring prophets angels and tazias and other secular depictions were also part of the painting the portrayal inspired by the life in the colonized society included compositions where the growing european influence in calcutta was also depicted the evils prevailing in the society were brought to the forefront and the figures of the heroes supporting the freedom movement were also illustrated owing to kali the embodiment of women power the painters depicted empowered women figures followed this the kalighat painting were further divided into two schools we have the oriental school where we focus on hindu gods and mythological figures and we had the occidental school which projected social evils and secular themes after studying kalighat paintings let us now move to the another form of painting which is known as the varli painting this is an art form which is practiced by varli tribes from the mountain and coastal regions in and around the borders of maharashtra and gujarat varli paintings originated around 3000 bc traditional varli paintings are known for the use of white paint on arch mud walls the white paint is derived from natural material like rice paste water and gum the paintings are made using a bamboo the tribal art is characterized by intricate by geometrical patterns of flowers wedding rituals hunting scenes and everyday activities an interesting feature of varli painting is that there aren't any straight line used in these paintings so we have dots circles and triangles essentially ritualistic varli paintings were usually made by married women to celebrate various occasions these paintings were also used to decorate the huts of varli tribes which were usually made up of mixture of cow dung and red mud another tribal marvel is the gond painting is an art form practiced by gond one of the largest tribes in madhya pradesh chatisgarh and the word 
is basically focused on the origin of tribes in the green mountainous region. These tribals had the tradition of decorating the walls of their houses with vibrant depiction of local flora, fauna and local gods such as Fulvari Devi. Traditionally, these paintings were made on festival locations like Karwa Chauth, Diwali, Ashtami and Nag Panchmi. They were again made from natural colors derived from local area, plants and cow dung. This is a simple form of painting which focused on the offerings to mother nature. So learners in this video on regional variations of painting we have studied that in all parts of India we find number of styles of painting. These painting styles are developed by the local rulers and are still practiced these painting styles need conservation and patronage by the tourists so that the livelihood of the local people can be improved and we can promote tourism in a big way. Thank you.